Spotify Lossless is finally here, and it's not perfect. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com, and I, along with many other people, have been eagerly awaiting the release of Spotify Lossless for, well, years now. It was kind of getting to the point where it looked like it was just never going to happen. But now that it is finally here, I've got to say, I'm pretty disappointed. And I have three questions. Firstly, is it actually lossless? Secondly, are there any other drawbacks that you should be aware of before using it? And now that Spotify lossless is here, should you switch from your existing streaming service to Spotify? The first question of is it lossless is something I've looked at on several streaming services before. You can go watch the video that myself and DMS did here, comparing various different streaming services. And I've also done other testing, like even going as far as to publish my own music to test Tidal and the MQA format, which led to some discussion in the audio community. But what about Spotify? Well, to test if something is actually lossless, we need to compare a genuine lossless version of the track to what we get out of a streaming service. So let's do that. I bought Pliny's album, Handmade Cities, and downloaded the lossless version from Bandcamp. Go and listen to Electric Sunrise on this album if you've not heard it before, it's good. And then I used this. This is the Audio Precision APX555 Audio Analyzer. It's basically a fancy oscilloscope and toolkit for analyzing all sorts of things about audio and audio devices. And I'm gonna record the output from these various streaming services playing through the hollow red since it has digital outputs into this and then we'll be able to compare what we get out of the streaming services to the original lossless file. And just to be sure, I did also check that the HoloRed itself is a bit perfect device, so it doesn't change the data going through it at all, it is completely transparent. Before taking the recordings, it's important to make sure that any sort of volume control, volume normalization options, crossfading and EQ in your client are turned off, as these will be altering what you're playing and volume normalization in particular is set to on by default in most services. And of course, check that quality is set to lossless. So I took these recordings of playing the same track from each streaming service and we can use a tool like Delta Wave to compare them. Looking at the comparison of the local file that I bought versus the recording from Tidal, we can see in the bottom left that it is bit perfect, meaning every single one and zero in the recording is exactly the same as the audio data in the original lossless file. Tidal is lossless, it is providing exactly the same data as what the artist provided to the streaming service. Comparing the original file versus Kobuz, once again we see 100% bit perfect. Both of these streaming services are indeed lossless and you're getting exactly the same result from both. If we then compare the recording taken with the very high setting on Spotify versus the original file, we wouldn't expect it to be bit perfect because it is compressed, information has been lost, and sure enough, if we have a look again, none of the audio samples in the recording match what was in the original file. But this number alone doesn't actually tell us how close the two recordings are. So to get a slightly better picture of how closely the compressed version resembles the lossless version, we can have a look at the correlated null figure. Opposite waves cancel each other out, so if we have two absolutely identical waveforms or recordings, invert one of them and add them both together, what we'd be left with is absolute silence. They would cancel each other out perfectly. But because these two aren't exactly the same, we can see roughly how close they are by how much stuff is left over once we do this null test. The figure at the bottom of the screen here shows us that the average correlated null for the whole track is about 55 dB, and the graph shows us how this figure changes at different points in the track. It's hovering around 52 dB for most of it, with momentary jumps up over 60 dB, so even though these two aren't exactly the same, this high correlated null does show us that even then, Spotify's compression algorithm is doing a good job of keeping the compressed version very similar to the lossless version. It's a high quality compression algorithm and the audible differences should be very small. Finally, let's check Spotify lossless. This one we should expect to be a bit perfect again since it's meant to be lossless, but having a look, only 0.01% of our audio samples are the same as what we got in the original file. Not ideal. If we look at the correlated null figure once again, we can see that there has been an improvement. The average has improved from about 55 dB to about 58 dB, and looking at the graph, it's staying comfortably above that 52 dB mark that we were seeing before, now bouncing between 56 dB and 60 dB. So it has definitely improved in quality, it is more similar to the lossless version, but it is not an exact match. I then tried playing a test signal. Luckily, someone has published a 10 kilohertz sine wave on Spotify and Tidal, so we can just use that. And if we compare what we get out of Tidal and Spotify, we can see that the Spotify version has quite a bit more additional distortion going on. All low in level and nothing that I'd call a concerning amount, but nonetheless, I'm paying for lossless. I want it to be bit perfect lossless, exactly the same as what the artist provided to the streaming service. And quite clearly, I'm not getting that here. 
So what is actually going on here? Why is this not lossless? Is Spotify lying to us? Well, what I think is happening is Spotify has made the exact same mistake as Deezer made. So they do seem to be streaming a lossless music file to you, but then giving you no way to actually play that file losslessly. This is because Spotify, unlike Tidal or Cobuzz, unfortunately gives you no way to have the client directly communicate with your DAC or output device. So instead, it has to go through the operating system mixer, the software that your operating system has to mix all of the different audio streams from different programs all into one combined output and feed that to your output device. And this means that whatever you feed into the OS mixer is to some degree going to be altered and degraded by that process. This is made worse if you don't have your Windows Audio sample rate set to 44.1 kilohertz, since then any of the 44.1 kilohertz music Spotify provides to your OS mixer has to be resampled to whatever sample rate your DAC is set to, but even if your Windows sample rate is set to 44.1 and there is no resampling going on, it is still not bit perfect and there is no way to actually get the audio out to your DAC without it degrading and altering things to some extent. Anecdotally, the level to which this is a problem varies. In my experience, I've had various times where the Windows mixer has been effectively completely audibly transparent, even if it's not bit perfect, there wasn't a way to easily tell a difference just by listening to it. And then other times I've had it where it's caused pretty outright audible issues, including a sort of high frequency scratchiness or artifacting. That's the most common problem I've come into. It seems to vary depending on what other software you've got installed, how many things are playing at once, are you resampling or not, and various aspects of your system configuration and what Windows version you're on. But regardless, there is no way, as far as I'm aware, to get bit perfect output through the Windows mixer. To get around this, other streaming services like Tidal and Cobuzz, music player software like Rune, or Professor audio workstations like FL Studio all have exclusive mode outputs. This is an option that allows the client itself to directly communicate with the audio output hardware and bypass the OS mixer entirely. And this does two things. Firstly, it eliminates any worries about resampling because the client can actually just tell the DAC itself to change sample rate. So if you suddenly play a high res track or something, it'll switch the DAC sample rate and there's no resampling that gets done. But secondly, and most importantly, it guarantees bit perfect output. There's no involvement from the OS mixer, and every single one and zero that is being streamed from the client or the player software is handed to the DAC without being changed at all. So, unfortunately, at the moment, it does seem that whilst Spotify Lossless is providing a quality improvement versus the very high setting that we had before, it's not as good as other streaming services for the simple reason that they have not included this software feature necessary for ensuring accurate audio output. But what about if you're not listening at your PC? What if you're mostly listening on your phone? Well, unfortunately there, things get a little bit worse. On Android in particular, again, Spotify has to go through the operating system mixer. There isn't a bit perfect output. And the operating system mixer on Android has a bit of a quirk, which is that all 44.1 kilohertz content, i.e. everything on Spotify, gets resampled to 48 kilohertz. And this, again, degrades the audio quality to some degree. In fact, we can show this by just repeating our test from earlier. Comparing the original lossless file to the recording of Spotify lossless playing on Android, we can see that now our correlated null has dropped to 50 dB average and throughout the track is hovering around 48 dB or so for most of the time. Actually, Spotify lossless on Android is getting a lower correlated null than very high was on Windows. I also did want to check whether Spotify Connect would provide different results, but at the moment I've not been able to get Spotify Lossless working on either the Hollow Red or the Eversolo DMP A6. I could only get very high output, so for the time being I haven't actually been able to get Lossless working at all on Spotify Connect. So at the moment there is no way to get properly lossless playback out of Spotify Lossless on Windows or Android. This may be different on iOS and macOS, I'm not sure, I don't have any of those devices to test unfortunately, but if you are an Apple user then it probably makes more sense to be using Apple Music anyway since A, it's cheaper than Spotify per month, and also, as well as genuinely being lossless, it has high-res lossless music, whereas Spotify is limited to 44.1 kHz. And actually, that brings me on to the second question, which is what other drawbacks are there to consider. The first issue to consider is what we just mentioned. There is no high-res content available on Spotify. Apple Music, Tidal, and Cobas all allow you to stream up to 192kHz 24-bit content where it has been made available by the artist. But on Spotify, all of this high-res content has just been downsampled to 44.1kHz. This would perhaps be less of an issue if Spotify was cheaper than the competitors, but at the time of writing, both Apple Music and Tidal are both cheaper than Spotify, whilst providing higher quality content and genuine 
16-bit perfect output. I don't want to just bash Spotify for the 48 kilohertz resampling limitation on Android though, because that actually does apply to all of them. Tidal, Kobuz, Apple Music, all of those will also have all 44.1 kilohertz music, which is most stuff, resampled to 48 kilohertz because it's just an Android limitation. Tidal specifically did used to have a feature where you could plug a USB DAC or dongle into your phone and a pop-up would show saying, would you like to give Tidal direct access to this device? And if you said yes, it would be able to feed bit perfect music at any sample rate to that DAC. But about a year ago, they removed it without saying why. Seriously, Tidal, give that back. What the hell, man? The way to get around this limitation is to use a third-party integration, which brings us to our second drawback. The app USB Audio Player Pro is something that I highly recommend, and it allows you to play local files, stream from Cobuzz, Tidal, and it provides direct bit-perfect output not only to connected USB DACs, but also to the DAC inside digital audio players as well. And you can also do features like EQ, for instance. It's a great app, highly recommend it. But there is no Spotify integration because Spotify does not allow commercial third-party integrations. The only two that they have are Sonos, because it was grandfathered in from over a decade ago, and Tesla. That is it. As far as we know, at the moment, there are no plans for Spotify to allow integration with Rune or USB Audio Player Pro, and so with no way to get proper lossless output on either my phone or my PC, that for me personally eliminates it immediately as a candidate. If you want lossless output on your phone or your PC, you've got to stick with Tidal or Cobus. So the third question then, now that Spotify lossless is finally out, should you switch your streaming service to Spotify? Well, personally, I would say no. Spotify is both more expensive than Tidal or Apple Music whilst also lacking features. It does not have actual lossless bit perfect output on either Windows or Android, and it also does not have high res content whereas Cobuzz, Tidal, and Apple Music all do. Additionally, just from a sort of ethics or feel good standpoint, and I'm not going to touch on the whole AI music fiasco going on with Spotify right now because that's a whole kettle of fish that I don't want to get into at the moment, just in terms of how much are artists being paid. Whilst it's tricky to get exact figures, it's generally accepted and known that Tidal and Cobuzz both pay artists significantly more than Spotify does. And so more of your money, which you're also paying less for the service for, is going to the artists you enjoy, which is a nice bonus. So I'm personally sticking with Cobuzz, and I would recommend that Apple users stick with Apple Music. It's cheaper than Spotify, it guarantees lossless output, it has higher quality music than Spotify does, and for Windows or Android users, I'd recommend Cobuzz or Tidal again as well. For the same reasons, again, they both have higher quality music than Spotify does, Tidal is cheaper than Spotify, and on Windows anyway, or with a third-party app on Android, they both allow you to actually play your lossless music losslessly. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you've got any other questions you wanted to ask about streaming services, music, DAX, amps, headphones, gear, or anything else at all, then come and say hey on the headphones.com Discord server or the headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, I'm Golden Sound. You're watching the Headphone Show by Headphones.com. See you soon.